What's up guys, Dave Woodson here, and today we're gonna go through our Thunder Bro Book of Methods. In this series, we're gonna cover a variety of different training principles to help you build muscle. The method we're covering today is called the Futures Method. The Futures Method is a strategy that allows a lifter to lift more weight than they can do naturally, lifting just straight weight. The way that we do this is with accommodating resistance, using implements like bands to help assist the weight up as the lifter performs the lift. You can do this through a variety of different movements with things like back squatting, deadlifting, and pressing. Today, we're gonna show you how to set up the rack correctly, what type of band resistance to use, and other considerations for doing this properly. So listen, the ideal setup for something like this is having an awesome power rig with a big crossbar at the top that you can just set a pin through, secure a band from the top, and then down to the bar. But let's be honest, not everyone has a cool setup like this, and there are lots of different ways you can replicate it. If you don't have a big power rack crossbar, you can simply lift underneath a pull-up bar. All you're gonna do is secure a band and loop it through itself, and then pull that down to the bar, and voila, you're doing futures method. The first step in executing this method properly is selecting the right type of band assistance. You wanna select a band tension that's gonna allow you to get about 10 to 20% of your one rep max in pounds of assistance as you lift. For something like a strict press, you might find yourself using a much lighter band. For something like a deadlift or a back squat, you'll probably find yourself using a heavier band. Jason, who's gonna be executing the reps today, has roughly a 400 pound back squat, which means I want him only to have 40 to 80 pounds pounds of assistance as he performs these lifts. As we're loading up here, what makes it really easy to kind of stack more cheese on the bar as you go is to secure the band outside the plates so you can quickly make plate changes, especially if you're working in groups and doing quick changing on the sets. You can just peel the band off, take some weight off, put it back on, and then get the band right on and you don't kill too much time between your sets. So let's talk about loading, sets, and reps. The idea with the futures method is to manipulate heavy mechanical loading. If the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending, which means the percentages are gonna be pretty high. Anywhere from 90 to 110% of your one rep max is the sweet spot to get the full advantage of this type of lift. Now with that, the reps are gonna correlate. You're probably not gonna end up doing 50 repetitions using the futures method, but we're talking anywhere from one to eight repetitions for three to 10 sets. So I'm gonna walk Jason through his first couple sets here. He's gonna start by setting himself underneath the bar. One thing I want him to be aware of is because the pins are set a little bit farther back, when he stands up, the bar actually might pull him backwards a little bit. So I want him to be prepared for that. So Jason, go ahead and stand up. Now he's got the really cool mono lift, so he doesn't need to go anywhere here. But when he performs the lift, I want him to go down nice and controlled. And then up good and fast. This is great as you go down to have a nice controlled eccentric. That's good to help uh, incur some of the muscle micro tearing. Come on down, Jay. And as he comes up, I just want him to drive hard. The idea is neuromuscular recruitment. One more, Jay. Look at that ass. Bam, 400 pounds, here we go. So Jay's gonna perform a set of three. He's kind of building up here as we go. So again, he comes down nice and controlled. And then he's driving through his heels as he comes up. 225 never felt so light, right, Jay? Love it. Look, he's talking and lifting. That is not recommended. <laughs> nice, Jay. Good, rack it up. This is also a really nice method for anybody who has like a knee or hip pain because it gives you the most assistance where those joints are very exposed. So uh, if you kind of suffer from uh, bad knees, this is a really nice way to make the movement feel very smooth while also getting a lot of loading in. So 
So now Jason's gonna show you a variation of a deadlift using the wagon wheels. This is really cool. Again, Jason's got a 400 pound deadlift. He can now get to percentages above 400 pounds to be able to start to feel what that load is like, especially at the top of the movement. So now we're gonna to go to some pressing variations. The first thing you wanna keep in mind is that you're probably not gonna strict press or bench press what you can deadlift or back squat, which means that the band tension is gonna be a little bit less. Also, you need to take into account that because now the bar is usually higher for pressing movements, that that's gonna affect the amount of tension on the band. So for Jason's strict press, he's got about 160 pound strict press. We're gonna take the blue bands and we're gonna hook them up to the bar to just give them a little bit of help out of the bottom of the movement. So Jay can do all different types of variations with the overhead pressing. He can do something like a strict press. He can do a push press. The point here is that he's just getting a little help. He should be able to lift more than he can lift without the band helping him out. So a couple different ways you can attack this for getting the right kind of stimulus. First, you could put more weight on the bar to allow you to lift something you've never touched before, or you can lift a heavy load, something in that 90 to 100 uh, percent 1RM range, but do it for more repetitions to accumulate more volume with that type of loading. So this is one of my favorite variations of the Futures Method which I think has a lot of applicability, which is the Futures Method Bench Press. Now you'll notice we're gonna use the same tension on the Futures Method Bench Press as we did on the Strict Press, but the difference is we're still gonna get a little bit more assistance because the bar is a bit lower. Now this is great for being able to work those upper ranges, or if you're trying to get to that 90 to even 110% of your one rep max to feel that weight at the top, that has tremendous training effect for a movement like a bench press, where we're dealing with generally smaller muscle groups that require a lot of neuromuscular engagement. So Jay's gonna set up on the bench. What I recommend, because we're gonna get kind of heavy on this movement, is I wanna make sure that his hands are in the correct position. If he gets too wide, that can actually expose the shoulder quite a bit. We wanna try to avoid injuries. So I'm looking for the shoulders, to, uh, hands to be about six inches outside the shoulders. And as he performs the movement, I'm looking to make sure that he keeps his elbows in, not flaring out. Nice, Jay. 95 pounds never felt so easy, right? So although we're getting a little bit of assistance here, one thing we want to be really cognizant and respectful of is that we don't take advantage of that by losing position, especially when we're reaching those loads that are more than we can move naturally without the assistance. We're looking for quality reps with good technique and a really good challenging loading stimulus. The way that you know that you're getting to that upper echelon of loading is when the bar speed starts to slow down or get a little bit sticky. That's the sweet spot that we're looking for in terms of that heavy loading, mechanical loading effect, where we say, hey dude, if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending. Futures Method, brought to you by Thunderbro.